Labs, cause or effect? One thing I always wonder about is the idea of sort of what is related to what, right? Is this causing that or is that causing that? So for example, we say you get in a car accident, it's because that guy ran in a red light, thus he hit your car, right? It's not because he hit your car, thus he ran the red light. It doesn't go backwards. But I think many times things aren't so simple in real life. For example, are you happy because you're smiling or are you smiling because you're happy? Most people would say, well, you're happy and thus you're smiling. But can you make yourself happy because you are smiling? Well, actually, they say yes. There's a study done by some rational economist like Daniel Kahneman. I don't remember if he was the author or O'Reilly or somebody else, but they put something in somebody's mouth so people didn't know they're smiling. They just knew they were asked to hold them in their mouth. And they had a survey afterwards of how they were feeling and the people who had a smile on their face actually felt better, even though they didn't know it. And I wonder in the medical field, we often do lab tests and we say, oh, you must be feeling this or that. But we all know that lab tests don't correlate exactly to what you're feeling. For example, you're feeling a cramp. Your electrolytes are fine. Does it mean you didn't have a cramp? No, you still have a cramp. I've heard explanation that your electrolytes are fine here in your arm where you drew the blood, but not in your leg. But either way, how do you know if somebody's labs are abnormal because they're feeling poorly versus they're feeling poorly because their labs are abnormal? The thyroid is a great example. Many patients in the hospital have weird thyroid levels. And we say, oh, you're sick, you thyroid. That means that because you're sick, your thyroid levels are weird. Not the other way around. Your thyroid levels are not affecting you, right? Or for example, somebody's cortisol level is low. Is it low because they're sick or is it because it's low that they're sick? And the best example I give you is white cell count, leukocytes, right? Your body's defense system. Sometimes people's levels are low. An infection, right? We will say, oh, because you have infection, your white counts have dropped. We won't say because your white counts are low, thus you have infection. And this is proven from you know, lab testing because we see people's white counts normally and they're not low. They get infection and then go down. So we know that is not the cause. But so many things, right? We don't know whether it's cause or effect, right? For example, the diagnosis of cancer is often incidental in a hospital. We do a scan, oh, this person has cancer. And I would say, oh, that explains this, 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 right? I mean, that makes sense to me. I'm not going to argue with that, right? For example, somebody, they had really bad heart pain, but now they're found to have a lot of disease around their heart. Their coronaries are plugged up. Maybe it wasn't heartburn, right? But all this is retrospect, right? You're saying now we know we could blame it on this or that. I'm saying right here, right now, can I do lab testing and tell you this is what you're feeling? No, I cannot. The lab tests are not going to tell me what you're feeling. You could tell me what you're feeling. I could see if that's related to the lab test and say, oh, yeah. But I can't look at somebody's lab saying, oh, this person's going to be feeling bad. I simply can't because it doesn't work that way, right? So cause correlation, right? We just simply don't know. And I think the big thing for me is there's so many things that we can't measure, right? People feel this or that, and we don't know why. We could do a thorough investigation and evaluation and try to figure out a reason to pin it on something to pin the blame, right? But it's sort of like looking at why airplane crash in our world, right? There's so many different factors involved. It's usually not one single person making mistakes. It's multiple people making mistakes, right? So we may try to find one thing to blame it on that, but it's not, right? I mean, someone say, oh yeah, you know, because of this, I got really sick. I'm like, look, You've had bad heart disease for months, if not years, right? It didn't happen overnight. It didn't even happen over months, right? It happened over years, decades. And the fact that, you know, you had a heart attack, yeah, that's a bad thing, but it's not because of one literal thing. It's many, many things combined over a long period of time that made you feel so poorly and you finally came in, right? It's the straw that broke the camel's back. But we're not saying that one straw is literally super powerful. We're saying... It just happens to be the last one. So you blame it on the last straw. But there's so many different factors involved. And this is one thing I feel is lacking in the medical field. This idea of cause effect, right? Not being so causal or correlating so much. Second thing is, I can't even tell you based on lab tests how you feel. Isn't that ridiculous? Right? I mean, it's so funny because we talk about this in, you know, residency and people teach you. 
A CT scan does not make the person. This person looks like he should be dead. Well, he's here and alive. You can't even tell, right? I mean, you can tell based on the CT how much fat and, you know, adipose tissue they have. But you can't even tell if he's doing well or not. Because some people have horrible immunity studies and they're doing fine, right? And I think that's one great example in the orthopedic field. Some people have horrible looking knees or bone on bone. And they're like, yeah, I'm fine. Some people don't have that bad looking and they're horribly not fine. They have a lot of pain when they move anywhere. Right? So that's the whole thing, right? We can't predict, based on looking at image studies, lab tests, what the person looks like, what the person feels like, anything. Does that mean to me that our lab tests are insignificant and don't mean very much? I would venture yes, right? To put it in a softer way, what I would say is, oftentimes we have a discordance. The person's getting better, but their white count's going up. And we just sort of ignore that and we say, well, clinically, you know, the person's getting better, right? But does the white count mean something? If it does, why don't we trust them and say the person's getting worse? If it doesn't mean anything, why did we check in the first place? Right? I think this is a field for further research. The fortunate aspect is nobody's really researching this because there's more a theory behind it. But hopefully, we'll work on it someday.